I'm the peak of a COVID time. I lost a lot of people in my facility. I had one gentleman who was the ex-correction officer in prison. He started losing uh, memory. He pulled the gun out on caregiver. Oh. The lady was on in the coma for months. Even though she's in the coma, they can hear. I knew that she was waiting for somebody, her older sister. So I gave her a phone and then she said, sis, you know, don't worry about us, okay? You just go, okay? We will meet you very soon up in heaven. 20 minutes later, she's gone. Can you describe some of the benefits of hospice? Just express your love. As many chances you get, give them a hug. You don't know what's gonna be happening tomorrow. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Vibe with Humanity podcast, a show intended on spreading positivity and kindness by showcasing inspiring stories of real-life people. I'm your host, Trevor. Tonight's guest is Samuel Lee. Sam is an immigrant from South Korea, and he runs a local elderly care slash hospice facility. I'm very excited to have him on. I have personal experience with him. My grandma went through his program and passed on through there. Towards the end, she was sleepwalking and getting a little bit senile. And so the way this is the kind of program and guy that Sam is. So he put a cot on the foot of her bed so that if she tried to get out, he could stop her and gently help her back to bed. And I'm eternally grateful for that. So on the show, we want to talk a little bit about what hospice is and get some information out to the public that can help them be emotionally ready for it and make the decisions on when to do it and shed some light on that. Sam, I am so glad you're here and I really appreciate you. I, I was a little bit hesitant at first, uh, but what you are doing here is good for our society and I thought it would be good for me to be part of it. And thank you very much for your encouragement and, and thank you for having me. Well, thank you for uh, being here and immigrating to this country. And wh what do you like about this country? What's your favorite, favorite parts? You know, um, yeah, this country, I just love this country. Trevor, I'm not flattering. Korea, that I went a couple of years ago and then visit the Veteran Memorial, you know, uh, museum. And reading off of those names, you know, off of a granite wall, and U.S. soldiers and U.K. and Australia, you know, all those names, especially young soldiers' names, 18, 19, 20 years old, young lives, they sacrifice their life in a foreign country, you know, fought for my country. And, uh, you know, tears coming out of my, my eyes, thinking of their parents, you know, and their loved one. How can I not like this country. I am so appreciated. What's your favorite part? My favorite part of the business is the, uh, when you take the um, you know, very uh, challenging cases, the elderly people with uh, you know, advanced Alzheimer and behavior, you know, uh, things like that, and turning into the um, good and healthy. That's my favorite part. Uh, I had one gentleman who was the ex um, uh, correction officer in prison, right? And then um, at home, that he started losing uh, memory issues, right? And then he's um, forget paying uh, bills. The, his bill is piling up. His food in the refrigerator uh, rotten, and um, you know, um, so neighbor report to the city. And they put him, uh, put them under conservatorship. Obviously, cons conservator uh, hired their caregivers at home, right? And then he didn't like it. So he pulled the gun out on caregiver. Oh. And obviously, nobody can, you know, work for him, right? So they end up to care facilities, which they cannot last, you know, for 10 days or two days because he wanted to go home, you know. So one day I um, got a phone call from an uh, agency, the agent telling me that, Sam, I have very challenging cases, a uh, case, uh, would you like to face it? Would you like to have an assessment? So I said, of course, yes, let's go. And there was a pretty big facility that I walked in and then I saw him, he's sitting on the wheelchair and then he had a big head, you know, big <laughs> um, body 
and with the beard and the smell. And then the administrator introduced me and he said, no, I don't need nobody. I have a, you know, I got to go home, okay? And then I saw that lady, the wife is very advanced Alzheimer and is staying right next to him. And then I just see his, his you know, kind of swinging. And um, I thought, no, I don't think I can handle him, right? So I told the agent, said, I'm sorry, I'm going to pass this case. And walk into um, to my car in the parking lot. All of a sudden, the, my heart is telling me, the Sam, I think it's God is telling me, you know, Sam, this is your job, and this is your, this is your duty. This is what you do. If you are not there, if kind of person like not there, then who's going to take care of these people, you know? And then I said, oh, my God. Anyway, I turned around, and then I walked in, and then I told the administrator, saying that, I'm going to take that. I will be back later on. Okay, so you just prepare all the paperwork. And so I came home, I came to the facility, and then I took one of my strongest male caregiver with me. I went there and took them, you know. So I told him that I'm going to take you to your home. And he was happy. So got him in my car. And then I told him, it's dinner time. So can you can we go stop by and eat dinner first before you go home? And he said, yeah. So which one do you like? You know, Chinese or Japanese? And he said Chinese. I called the local Chinese restaurant owner that I know, reserved that corner, you know, uh, table, right? Because it smells, <laughs> you know. And uh, so very interesting that he's mad at everybody, whole world. He's mad at judge. He's mad at. A conservator, he's mad at managers, you know, everybody. But he loves his wife. And then I'm seeing him that, you know, chow man and things. I say, here, eat, eat this, honey. I thought that he was a very nice man, you know, with, with the Alzheimer's disease and, you know, whatever, the memory loss and things like that. So he came, and then I told him, it's getting late, okay? We're going to go stay at the hotel tonight, okay? And then I took him to my house. And literally three of us caregivers were just holding him and then pushing him to the shower room. And he said, no, I don't take oh. shower and things. I stepped out to the stool and they gave him a warm water and just the way it is, just where the, he wear the jacket and things, right? Because he didn't want to take off. So I gave him a shower because they are heavy now right, with the water. It, he just took off and things. After that, lying on his bed, he said, I feel so good. He probably hadn't showered for a month, you know. So ever since that, sure, that we had a little bit of, a, you know, uh, behavior issues and things, but he lived very good life, you know, with his wife until he passed. So that's, that's my favorite part. You know. What are some of the most challenging or the most challenging part for you? I would say um, most challenging part to see that young people who get Alzheimer at uh, early age and they die young, you know, age, those are the most chilling part. It just really um, hurts. So I had a one a case like a, a teenager got a car accident and then, uh, over 30 years of suffering, you know, in brain damage, you know, lying on the bed, died in 49 and those things. And then one other most recent case, that very uh, nice man, um, very intelligent, is ex-government um, secret agent. I cannot tell you know the name of the organization, but no problem. yeah, he's he's a very uh, what do you call um, very smart and um, competent you know agent. And he took care of a lot of big cases, solved the big cases that I heard. He got Alzheimer a little early, and he moved into my facility in two and a half months, and he passed. He's about my age. You know, I, I get attached, you know, kind of person like him, and he's a very good man, and then um, it's heartbroken. You know, the wife, beautiful wife, beautiful daughter, comes to see dad, you know, giving a hug, and then kissing him, 
walking, you know, he is unstable, right? He's walking him and things like that. To see them is, I feel so sorry for them, you know. So that's a challenging part of the business. So hospice, I didn't realize, was kind of its own medical program and its own system in a way. Can you describe some of the benefits of hospice? First of all, I think that uh, hospice is the one of the best medical system that we have. You know, um, a lot of people has a misconception of hospice, saying, oh, they're going to die early, die quick, uh, or giving up the hope. You know, of course, that meaning of hospice is not to be cured or uh, recover from the, uh, you know, their condition or illness. And then again, you know, uh, six month life expectancy of six months or less. But it doesn't mean that it's people going to die quick, you know, or giving up hope. Um, the hospice is such beneficial to patient and family because, again, I'm not a representative of hospice or trying to do PR, but because from my experience, right? The hospice uh, benefit is like a, so much, right? They just bring all the uh, medical equipment, including hospital bed and, you know, um, oxygen tank and all those things. Um, not only that, uh, they have uh, so much of a uh, resource to uh, get help, you know, most emotionally and spiritually for family members as well. And um, again, you get 24-7 service. A nurse can be literally in 30 minutes when you call, right? And they have their own doctor, along with your own, you know, uh, physician. Um, you can get medical attention right away and then get a, a change of dosage, you know, the medication, prescription, all those kinds of things. On top of that, you know, government pays for that. No money out of your pocket. Most of the insurance, Medicare and Medicare and your insurance will cover those things. So it's such a beneficial thing. A lot of people do not know. Some people, they say, oh, gosh, I should know, you know, uh, earlier so I could have some of those kind of benefits. Yeah. What common things do people say before passing? I had a one couple that I thought that's one of the uh, cutest elderly couple I ever met. Okay. And uh, the gentleman is age about 86. Um, so he moved in with his wife. And he had a um, stage four cancer, carrying a tremendous amount of pain. But he's so witty, so he's joking all the time, and we immediately liked him, okay? And um, his wife, so cute, spending hours making up, you know, her face, and then put the lipstick, and then he has, she has a wig, and doing it so cute, um, and then, about four days later, they moved in. I wanted to do something to make them happy, you know. So I, walked, I went into uh, their room, and then I said, I grabbed my guitar, and I'm going to sing a song, okay, love song. This is love song from you to your husband, and then this is from you to your wife, okay? And then they just sitting on their chair, and then I sang a song called the Let It Be Me. The lyrics goes, you know, uh, I bless the day I found you. I want to stay with, around you. So, you know, and so I beg you, let it be me. Like the wife kind of hitting a husband with a love light in her eyes. And so, and then I was just so happy to make them happy, right? And then right after I finished my song, he just fell to his wife on the floor. We did jump on and we did a CPR, we did a mouse to mouth and CPR and everything. And he died next day at the hospital. And I knew, and the family agrees that too, that he was waiting. He wanted to make sure that his wife is in comfortable and safe place. And he just let go of himself you know, after that. Are there any things that they ask for? Um, yeah, passing or maybe not not even before passing that they do most common thing that they ask is to to go home. Of course. I want to go home. So I can give you another example, right? 
um, the young man, fairly young man, he lost his wife all of a sudden. He woke up and the wife was passed you know, in the morning. So he got de devastated. He cried and, um, you know, he quit his job and started drinking. And then it's just a mental breakdown and with a mental disorder. So make a long story short, and he ended up to care facility to care facility, right? And then he came to under my care, always looking for exit, climb up the fence, I mean, previously, right? And uh, we literally had to hold him. We had to stay with him like 24-7 because he, he can just split out. You know, if he goes out to the street, <laughs> he's going to get hit by a car, you know, and it, it, it's dangerous, right? So one day... <sighs> I had to take him to my car because he's insisting he wanted to go home, right? So I said, Tom, let's go. Put him in my car. And then I drove neighbor around, right, around, around. And then he know, he knew, he said, no, this is not my house. I want to go home. Can you go further? This is not my house. Go further. So finally, I had to stop the car under the shade. I said, Tom, you know, your house being sold. Your house has sold, okay? And then your wife, you know, your wife passed away, right? She's in heaven. You know that, right? And he said, he paused. He said, I know, you know, but, but I miss her so much. She was my best friend, and I just missed her so much. She, I mean, he cried. And then I had to hold his arm, and then I had to cry together for about 15 minutes. That, that was very, very um, sad. So a lot of people, they ask me, you know, I want to go home. Have you seen things that science can't explain? Yeah. I wouldn't say a lot, but yeah, yeah, several of them like this. Again, that I have to, I'm not a doctor, you know, I'm not a nurse, things, but I can only share my experience. One man, he always drink and eat so fast. So he goes to the wrong pipe, gets frequent pneumonia. And one day they got a very um, severe pneumonia. And the nurse came and she said, he's, he's gonna be gone probably by tomorrow, you know, if it's not tonight. So we, we can literally, we can hear the sound of water in his lung. You know, I mean, that much. So anyway, um, one night passed by. He got up. Nothing happened. Just normal. No signs, right? <laughs> He's alive and, you know, so. That's it a was, miracle. Yeah, I mean, it is really a miracle, right? So the doctor came and I asked. And the doctor said, Sam, this is, I don't know. But this is very, very, very rare case. But I think God has a way to helping some people, you know, through the uh, body organ, absorbing all those kind of foods and whatever that it has, right, inside. And then just let, release all the water through the skin overnight. I think that's, that's what it happened. So I thought, I am, yes, I am totally believe in God, his existence, and his healing power. Totally believe in it. Uh, a few guests ago, someone was talking about how people can choose to transition or sometimes they need permission. Have you ever seen situations where people need permission to of go? Of course, yeah, yeah. Mm. I've seen many, yeah. The permission means that, uh, yeah, you know, let go, right? So, uh, again, that I can give you uh, maybe one uh, example. Yeah, please. Um, the lady was on in the coma for months, you know, and she would not go. But she stopped breathing, you know, for about 15 to 30 seconds, and then whew, do it again. And I call family member, right? That you, I think your mom, and, you know, will, will pass very soon. All family, daughter and the son and grandkids, and they all surrounding bed, and the mom, you know, I love you, okay, you know, bye, you know, and things like that, right? She wouldn't go. Week passed by. Another week passed by. She stopped breathing and then coming back and then <laughs> she's hanging in there. For a week. Yeah. 
I knew that she was waiting for somebody. That was her older sister who lives in Reno. Couldn't come because of snow. Okay. And the sister called me, you know, and said, how is my, my sister doing? And I said, she's still hanging in there. And the one day that I called, I think you need to talk to her. Okay. I'm going to give this phone to your sister's ear. Okay. And you can talk to her. You can just say, you know, you love her, you know, and things like that, right? Whatever you want to say. Because I know uh, the last sense they're losing is the hearing. Even though she's in the coma, they can hear. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, so, so I gave her a phone, and then she said, Sister, I love you so much. You are a big part of my life, and, you know, we have uh, such a memories, and I, I will forgive you what you have done to me, you know, when we grow up, you know, and then, uh, and then uh, you forgive me what I said that and things like that. And then she laughed, and she cries and everything, right? And she told, finally she told her, sis, you know, don't worry about us, okay? You just go, okay? You let go, okay? We will meet you very soon up in heaven, okay? About 20 minutes later, she's gone, you know? So I knew she was controlling her timing to see last person and last permission. And then she let go. Anyway, I was going to say one more um, example, but I, I don't want to take too much of your time. No, this is what we're here for. I'd love to hear another example, yeah. if you don't mind sharing. Yeah, uh, again, this is kind of a recent case. That I had a f family, you know, the grandpa was over 90 year old man, moved in my facility, and uh, he's same thing, like he's like a, almost in coma, has a very, very nice very, very loving daughter and very, very loving grandson who's living in down south, right? So, and they're almost passing that I called, you know, I think your grandpa is passing. She had a phone with the ear. He's, Pop, you know, I love you so much. And, you know, I mean, he, the young man was a very likable man. I mean, she loved his grandpa. So, and then I saw your grandpa lying on the bed and the tears coming like this. You know, it's just flowing down, right? Oh my God. And then I took a picture and then I kept it and then later on I sent to them. And then he passed, you know. How was COVID for you with the hospice program? How did that impact you? Yeah, actually, yeah, it was tough. That was... You know, COVID a time, the peak of a COVID time. I I lost a lot of people in my facility. Really? Yeah, yeah because oh. um, COVID hit my facility, one of my facilities. And then, um, I went down. We had all masks and everything. And my um, staff, one of staff, get sick and the fever. So I sent them home. He couldn't come next day, right? And then I knew. And, um, and the next caregiver, I tested positive. And then I checked everybody, my elderly resident. Everybody, positive, positive, positive. <laughs> Except me. <laughs> I'm the only one didn't get, because I had early, you know, uh, vaccine and everything. But I don't know. I think that's, again, that God was helping me. I was the only one, and I sent all my caregivers at home, right? My employees had to go home. I ended up with my resident. I had to work like a three weeks all by myself, day and night, feeding them. Elderly people, they do not eat like us. You have to give a one spoon, and they just, you know, eat. And then I get another dish, another room, and feed them all day long. Not only that, I had to report to the um, Department of Social Service and local health department, all those organizations. Uh, it was like so hard. You're talking about mask and face mask and with a gown and things, sweating like crazy, right? 
And then again, then I have to talk with the family members. How's my mom and things like that on the phone. It was very, very tough. But I went through, memorized the Bible verses, you know. <laughs> so anyway, about three, three uh, Bible verses that I was memorized, I was able to go through. So anyway, I went through it. And, um, you know, I lost uh, many people. Do people express any regrets when they look back on their life? Do you see commonalities in that that you can share so maybe people can do things while they're alive and have less regrets? Of course, yeah. Just express your love mm. to your spouse. Your children, your, your parents, your grandma, grandpa. As many chances you get, give them a hug. You know, tell them I love you. Spend more time your, with your children, okay? And pick up the phone, say hi to grandma, grandpa, send a letter, okay? Do not procrastinate, okay? Um, use all those um, FaceTime and video chat. We're living at such a high technology age, right? Why not using those tools, right? Because there are so many dangers around us in our daily life. And then our life is so unpredictable. You don't know what's going to be happen tomorrow, right? So just express your love. I just wanted to share some uh, yeah, my experience, that's all. But well, hope you, this one would be help. Absolutely. You did fantastic and gave very pertinent information that <laughs> I don't think a lot of people know. We don't know much about the death process in America. At least I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you, you very much. much.